what would be the perfect way to die? Just, no, I seriously want to know. What would be the perfect way to die for you? Just tell me in the comments. I want to know. My question will make sense at the end of this video in case you're like grossed out after that and then see Maximilian Colby's ending. Yeah, um, but so we're talking about Blessed Imelda Lambertini today, and unlike the last few saints I did, her feast day is not this week, or last week, by the time you see this, it'll probably be last week. Um, her feast day is May 13th, it's the same as Our Lady of Fatima, and so because Our Lady of Fatima, Mary, is bigger than her, nobody knows about her, plus she's a blessed, I think she should be a saint, but she's a blessed, so also, like, it's not, her feast day isn't really celebrated. Um, but, the, um... So, well, the reason we're talking about her is because I love her so much. She's one of my favorite saints, probably, if not one of, like, top, top three. Literally top three. Um, but, um, I'm connecting this, making this logical, because Pius X's feast day was Tuesday, August 21st. And he lowered the age of uh, receiving first communion, first communion, um, to seven instead of fourteen, like it was when Blessed Imelda was alive. And so that's how I'm relating this to anything relevant for this week, liturgically. She's the patroness of First Communicants, as you will find out f the reason why. That was bad grammar. Um, after this PowerPoint. Okay, so she was born in 1322 and lived in Bologna, Italy her entire life. Um, she was only 11 when she died. Um, and her family was wealthy and devout at the same time, and um, so... They would go to Mass in Compline at this Dominican church nearby, where she eventually entered, I think. And then, but her, um, like, it's faith and works, and so her mother would um, help her, t teach her how to perform cripple works of mercy to the poor, and then give money to the poor, and all that kind of awesome stuff. And uh, her mother first explained the Eucharist to her when she was like five, and she just wanted to receive him so badly, but you couldn't receive until you were 14 in 1322. Um, but she was just, like, had this burning desire, and she had to wait, like, for, she had to wait forever, it seemed, until she could actually receive him, but, uh, this is, like, the, the only, actually, quote we have of her, and it's probably, like, one of my favorite quotes ever. Can you tell, can, tell me, can anyone receive Jesus in her heart and not die of joy? Okay, so when she was nine, she entered the Dominicans, and, like, she wanted to do this, her parents didn't force her into it, they actually kind of, like, no, wait, because she was the only child. Um, but so she would wear the habit and like live with the convent life as much as possible, even though she was only nine. Um, but she wasn't allowed to go to like night, pr like night, night prayers, not Compline. She could go to Compline, but like night prayers is in, they happen at three in the morning. She couldn't go to that. But, you know, she would, um, do everything that she was allowed, she could at the age of nine. Um, and her favorite saint was St. Agnes because, they were, like, Agnes was one of the virgin martyrs. She was really young, and she loved Jesus enough to die for him, even at a young age. And she had this develop, it's kind of like what we're trying to do now in this series, is develop a holy friendship with the saints. With this saint, St. Agnes, and the other saints, and she called them her secret companions. And I think there was a story once that, like, St. Agnes appeared to her and prayed, like, midnight prayer and that's not what it's called but prayed midnight prayer with her in her cell um and as she like she entered into the life and continued to grow older she would beg the priest and the mother superior who was in charge to allow her to receive uh, holy communion but they always said no um and then um a lot of and the kind of the verse that embodies this whole story is like let the children come to me do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these um, and so she would repeat that, like, in prayer, but, um, still, she couldn't receive the Eucharist. And so, uh, two years pass, and on the eve of the Ascension, 40 days after Easter, they were getting ready for the eve of the Ascension Mass, and she was just still, like, again, begging the Lord to let her receive, even when the priest wouldn't allow it to happen. Um, and so it was after Mass, so she's kneeling in the pew after Mass, um, and, oh, sorry, she's in the MP after Mass, and the sister, the sacristan, who was cleaning up after Mass, she comes out, and she sees the 
Eucharist floating out of the tabernacle and then, like, landed above Imelda's head. And she's like, oh my gosh, what is this? So she goes to get the priest, and the priest is like, fine. Obviously, the Lord wants her to receive. So, um, he gave Sister Imelda the Eucharist. I don't know why it says breakfast. It should not say breakfast. Um, because that doesn't make sense. Um, just because the Eve of the Ascension happens at night. Anyway, um... This is what happens when the saints in 1322. Um, anyway, so, Sister Amelda's Thanksgiving. So she's praying, like, Thanksgiving is what you're supposed to do after Mass, and just, like, conversing with the Lord. And I encourage you, even if it's just, like, two minutes, to stay and pray after Mass. Because, like, our Lord wants us so badly to stay with Him. And just sit with Him and pray with Him after Mass, when everybody else is being loud and talking in the church. Um, just because he wants to speak his truths to us, and he wants to hear what's going on in our lives, and if we leave right after Mass, then he can't do that. Um, and he's really, really disappointed when we don't do that. There's a Faustina quote that I should look up about Thanksgiving after Mass. Um, so, continuing on, to, but back to Amelda. So, she's doing her Thanksgiving, and after like an hour or two hours, um, Mother comes to get her, or some of the sisters come to get her, to tell her to come to eat food. And they're like, Sister Imelda, come on. And then she just collapses, and they realize she has died of joy because she had finally got to receive Jesus after waiting, like, almost, well, like, seven or eight years to receive. So, like, she finally could receive him, and she got so happy that she actually died. Um, I don't know. This drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. I love her. Um, okay, and because there's only that one quote by her, I got quotes about Amelda from the Dominican, Nashville Dominican website. Um, these are two of them. They have a whole little article blurb about her if you want to follow the link, or go to Nashville Dominican. I'll, I'll put the link in the description. Um, so... Uh, here are two quotes about her. Little Amelda Lambertini would not have given us a theological treatise on devotion to the Holy Eucharist. She would simply have told us of Jesus' love in the sacrament and then suggest that we learn to know him there, as she did. And so, like, we've got the Dominicans are, like, all crazy intellectuals, but Amelda is this 11-year-old who just loved the Lord so much that she died. But we like the children, Jesus says. It's a very bad paraphrasing. Unless you become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. There we go. It's better. And then here's another one. Um, Amelda understood instinctively what many of us have forgotten, that it is in the single-hearted the single-hearted who are blessed and, blessed, and that unless we become like children, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. I just quoted that Bible verse. Um, cool fact about um, blessed in Latin, blessed, uh, beata, which means blessed, also means happy. Um, so you can think about the Beatitudes like that, um, but you can also address this quote, the single-hearted who are happy. Um, Blessed Amanda Lambertini, pray for us. She is incorrupt, by the way. Um, I'm of the opinion she should be a saint. In talking about her, her virtues, of course, you can probably guess I'm going to focus on, you know, her love for the Eucharist. And a lot of us, I know, I'm sure including myself, we all know, like, transubstantiation or whatever, if we were, like, one of the cradle Catholics, or even just, like, we know that it's the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, but it's all intellectual. And a lot of times it doesn't quite penetrate our heart enough. And, um, but that that's always the journey. It's always a journey from the head to the heart that we all have to go on. And Amelda just experienced it really intensely and really young. She, I was reading in one of the books that I have about Dominican saints. She's in there, and, and uh, it said something like, "Amelda, uh, her heart broke. Her heart was so full that it broke because she just loved our Lord so much, and she was so full of Him, and so empty of herself that her heart broke open, and our Lord just came to her to take." her to be with him forever instead of her having to be separated from him instead of just, just like the 15 minutes with Jesus before before he um isn't present in us anymore 
if you're going to put it that way. Um, but so we can ask her to help us on that journey from a loving the Eucharist and loving our Lord, same thing, from the head to the heart. And you just choose a few ways where you can do that. You can uh, do a weekly holy hour if that's an option for you, in your parish. Or you could go say, okay, I'm going to go to daily mass on Wednesdays. I'm going to go to daily mass on Fridays. Um, and then you can expand from there. Or you can choose another really Eucharistic saint. or learn. More. Well, there's not a lot to learn about Imelda because she was so long ago and so young. But you can learn about another Eucharist, Eucharistic saint. This video, actually, the series of videos was born out of an assignment that I had for religion this past year. Um, it's called Saint Journal. And she, uh, the assignment for the, for Amelda was choose a saint who is, uh, known for the devotion to the Eucharist. And so it's just like, um, you get a journal and then you learn about the saints. There's pictures in here, there's facts, there's quotes. Um, we had specific things, but this is, well, JP2. Um, but, you know, you can do that, do a saint journal, um, but just learn more about another Eucharistic saint. But just find the way, ask our Lord what he wants you to do, uh, to grow more in love with him, because that's really what all the saints want to teach us, just bring, uh, bring us closer to our Lord, and, um, bring us to heaven. That's, that's what the saints want to do when, as they're, because they've already, they've already finished the journey. video. I hope it inspires you to learn more about the Eucharist and grow in love with the Eucharist, really, not just learn, but, you know, take it and learn about it. Um, another way to do that is to look at these videos. You know, might just want to try the, try those out. Um, but, I mean, that's all I can say. Get holy enough and doing it, guys.